My personal favorite in that entire sequence is when the ice is smashing and you hear like, oh, that's such a good shot. So I thought I'd start from the beginning and take you through the entire process of how I edited this sequence together and what kind of keyframing, what kind of uh, effects I added and those kind of things so that you know how I piece this entire thing together. So let's start with the first shot. So this shot was actually something that I had planned in my head for a really long time and I kind of used the same establishing shot as I did for the poker video, but I kind of want to have a little bit more motion into this. So I asked Edwin to take a drink of Campori and sit down in the sofa and have a sip. And as you can see, like in the foreground, the glass is coming up slightly. So you are introduced to the Campari both behind the bartender, but also in the foreground. And to give the shot a little bit more like warm feeling, I also added in a lens flare from M Flare 2, which is a plugin that I used throughout this video in a couple of the shots to make it look mm, so good. It is super simple. You just drag it onto the clip and then adjust the color of it and then track it so that you can like have it a little bit glowing. And if you look at down, in the right corner, you can actually see the aberration coming up, moving ever so slightly, which actually made the whole shot become way more alive than it was before. And the second shot with the ice was something that turned out way better than I thought it would, because initially I wanted to get this shot with a 40 millimeter baddest, but then I reverted back to the 24 millimeter because I think it looked so much better with that one. And I also wanted to have the Campari logo visible in the right hand side of the frame as we were going back. But as I got into the editing, I also wanted to add some sort of like um, touch to it. And that is where I added in the smoke and made it look like the ice was really cold and you have this steam coming off the ice. And what I did is that I downloaded the smoke pack from Motion VFX and then I added it on to the clip and then scaled it up so that we could scale it down as we were moving away from the ice. And then I masked it out so that it wasn't visible except for above the actual ice tray that we had in the shot. And then I also wanted to have like the ice cracking like to make it more in depth and make it feel more alive. And this shot, I didn't do that much of adjustments to, except for some slight keyframing to both the scale and the rotation, and also the position of the clip to make it feel like it's a little bit more steady and a little bit more aligned with as I wanted it to be. And for the shot, when I'm panning up as he grabs the ice chopping tool, I'm actually wanted to make that a little bit more blurred out in the beginning. So I added something that is called a directional blur to it, which is actually something that's built into Final Cut Pro and it's super simple to add in. You just drag it onto your clip and then I decided to keyframe the first couple of frames so that it gives us a little bit like a blurry uh, movement to the shot instead of just having a frame by frame and make it look a little bit choppy. And this ties in the entire sequence way better than if we didn't have that in the shot. And as he like grabs up the ice and then bah, chops it up, I wanted to make that feel like And to get the effect of like the shake as he like punches the ice, I just used the built-in handheld effect that you can find in Final Cut Pro. And then I keyframed the shakiness of that from zero to like 50 in a couple of frames. So that just gives us this slight impression that it is a really hard hit. And this is something that I've used for the car commercial and the poker bureau as well, but it's really effectful and a super simple effect that you can use. And for the next shot, when he pours the ice into the glass, I wanted this to be very like blue and reddish. So. What I did is that I added in a flare from the bottom with a subtle blue-ish tint to it so that it looks like it's glowing almost from the bottom. And then we have the red in the background from the nan lights that we had behind the behind the bottles in the borba. And if you want to see how I make like perfect speed ramps, I'm gonna wrap a video right here because I think that you might enjoy it if you aren't that familiar with speed ramping in Final Cut Pro. For the next shot, when it swings around the bottle, this was actually something that I had 
couple of a little bit of hard time to know how I was going to do in the edit because it looked a little bit choppy in the original shot when I did the speed ramp and you had like the cha 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 cha. So I did the same thing as I did in a shot in the beginning and added in the directional blur to this and to give it a little bit more of a warm ambience, ambiance. Uh, I also added in the warm studio light flare to this so that when you look it back, it gives us a little bit of a glow from the bottles that are standing in the back. And I think it does a whole lot for the entire shot. And I also adjusted the scale and the rotation with a couple of keyframes to make it feel like it's like going in, zooming in a little bit more on the Campari logo and then twisting a little bit as he breaks the seal off the bottle. And just before we repan out, I keyframed in the directional blur so that it would blur out the background and make this whip pan a little bit more seamless than it otherwise would have been. And when he pours up the Campari into the glass, I wanted to have the same kind of like glowing blue from the bottom. So I added in the um, warm studio light from the Amflare 2 plugin here as well with a slight bluish tint to it. And I think it turned out really, really good. And since this shot was shot in 240 FPS in full HD, it was incredibly noisy straight from the camera, but I was actually amazed on how much noise that got like totally disappeared when you were like pulling down the mid-tones, adjusting the blacks and the highlights, and it looks really good. The only thing that I did was that I wanted to add in a slight noise reduction to get rid of those like last couple of annoying noise speckles that you had in the background. And when it comes to uh, that lime toss, it was a little bit of a keyframe in the beginning to give it a little bit of like a zoom in feeling to it. And then as he throws it up, we could keyframe so that the camera is basically panning up like with the lime. But I also keyframe the position, the scale, so that we could track the lime in the shot to make it feel like we're moving the camera more than we actually did. So it looks way better when you have the keyframing in place than if I just had the original shot as I got it. But I think it turned out cool. It looks like some kind of like, oh, matrix Ooh, pan. <laughs> as he's cutting the lime, I wanted to have a little bit of a red tone into this shot as well, because we didn't have anything that was matching with our previous setting that we had. So I added in the warm studio light flare from M Flare 2 into this as well. And it gives us a little bit more of an ambience to the shot and looks a little bit better. And then I color corrected with a mask over the knife to brighten that up so that you can see the pattern of the knife a little bit more than if you just were to color grade without brightening up the knife. I also zoomed in on this and adjusted the keyframes on both the position and the scale so that we could like control the entire movement slightly more uh, than we otherwise could. And when he pours the tonic, I wanted it to feel a little bit like we were zooming out and uh, having this like going from a blurry background into sharpness. So what I did here is that I added on a Gaussian blur and keyframe the amount of it so that in the beginning we have it set to like 17% and then it goes down to 0% as the glass is coming into focus. And this turned out really good because as we are reducing the Gaussian blur, the background becomes more blurry, but the glass is coming into focus and it works amazingly well to sell the entire concept. I also added a little bit of keyframing to this so that I zoomed in in the beginning and then zoomed out and then adjusted the position ever so slightly on the shot as well. As he goes forward and like squeezes the lime, I added a little bit of stabilization in Final Cut Pro and set it to automatic, which works really well. And then I decided to add slight keyframing to the scale of the clip and also rotate it so that it looks like it's actually level with the camera the entire shot because I think I got it like slightly off axis. So this looks way more professional, much better and gives us a little bit more of a thought out shot than what we initially started out with. 
And with this shot, I also zoomed in with some keyframes to make it feel like we were moving closer than we actually were with the camera. And since we're shooting the majority of these shots in 4K 120, we will not lose any kind of resolution to talk about because it's not gonna be noticeable on YouTube or Instagram, and it still gives us a lot of details to play around with. And I also added in a flare to this shot as well to give us a little bit more ambience in the shot and make it feel a little bit more alive. And then I also did some slight adjustments to the hue saturation curves and masked that out to match the glass so that it tracks the glass the entire time and makes it look more vivid than it otherwise would. And I think it turned out really good and make the whole like pop out and uh, feel a little bit better. For this shot, I basically did the same. I added a flare in the top left-hand side of the shot and then dragged the scales so that it zooms in on the shot ever so slightly, even though we're moving the camera, but it gives us a sense of a little bit more smooth shot closing in on the actual movement. And as for the last shot, we had like two minutes to rig this up, so there wasn't like any possibilities to do a lot of retakes on this. But I did shoot this with a 40 millimeter and it did get a little bit shaky. So I added uh, some stabilization to it in Final Cut Pro with a built-in stabilization tool. And then I also added in a flare from the left-hand side here as well so that it matches with a previous clip. And then I keyframed a mask to this in Color Finale Pro so that the mask is just attached to our glass and makes it look more vivid in the final shot than it actually was. And I also tweaked the lime so that it was more green and popped out a bit more from the glass too. And I think it turned out pretty good. And that is basically how I edited this video together. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't seen the original behind the scenes video, I highly recommend you do it because I think you're gonna have a blast. I'm gonna link it right here and at the end of the video. If you like this, Thank you so much. Do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd highly appreciate that as well. And uh, oh, Peter from Sweden saying goodbye.